Hi, my tubies. My TikToker, Sheila True Love, here with you. Uh, I want to talk about what the Republican Party have in store. What are they planning in terms of the year 2024 and 2025? Let's take a listen to my girlfriend here, and she's always on point. She knows exactly what she's talking about, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss it. Let's take a listen to my girlfriend here. Go ahead, girlfriend. The Republican Party's agenda for women in this upcoming 2024 election is pretty clear. They want us married to men and having their children, and that is the only thing they want for us. They don't want us to be single mothers, they don't want us to be in same-sex relationships, and they definitely do not want us to be childless. If you don't believe me, this came directly from their playbook, The Mandate for Leadership, on Project 2025's website. Let's start here. On page 13, promise number four says that they want to secure our God-given individual right to enjoy the blessings of liberty. They say the pursuit of the good life is found primarily in family, marriage, and children. On page 451, one of their goals for the Department of Health and Human Services is to promote stable and flourishing married families. Families comprised of a married mother, father, and their children are the foundation of a well-ordered nation and healthy society. Unfortunately, family policies and programs under President Biden's Health and Human Services are fraught with agenda items focusing on, quote, LGBTQ equity, quote, subsidized single motherhood, dis disincentivizing work, and penalizing marriage. These policies should be repealed and replaced by policies that support the formation of a stable, married, nuclear family. Working fathers are essential to the well-being and development of their children, but the United States is experiencing a crisis of fatherlessness that is ruining our children's futures. Mind you, nowhere in here in this entire document are they addressing the root cause of fatherlessness at all. At no point have they held fathers accountable for this, but I digress. In the overwhelming number of cases, fathers uh, insulate children from physical and sexual abuse, financial difficulty or poverty, incarceration, teen pregnancy, poor educational outcomes, high school failure, and a host of behavioral and psychological problems. By contrast, homes with non-related boyfriends present are among the most dangerous place for a child to be. HHS should prioritize married father engagement in its messaging, health, and welfare policies. So they are pushing that women stay married to the fathers of their children. At no point are they addressing domestic domestic violence or any type of violence against the children or the mother in any way. In this section, social science reports that assess the objective outcomes for children raised in homes aside from a heterosexual intact marriage are clear. All other family forms involve uh, higher levels of instability. The average length of same-sex marriages is half that of heterosexual marriages, financial stress or poverty, and poor behavioral, psychological, or educational outcomes. So basically they're saying that LGBTQ parents cannot raise their children properly. In their family agenda, they state that the Secretary of Health and Human Services should profoundly state that men and women are biological realities that are crucial to the advancement of life sciences and medical care, and that married men and women are the ideal natural family structure because all children have a right to be raised by the men and women who conceive them. So if you didn't conceive the child you're raising, the Republican Party doesn't believe that you should be allowed to be their parent. Their thoughts on child support Congress established aid to families with dependent children in 1935 to assist single parent families who were suffering financially from the loss of a breadwinning husband and father. Within two decades, however, the majority of families receiving aid were dependent because of paternal abandonment rather than death. Today, nearly a third of America's children live without a father present in the home and a fourth of them are enrolled to receive child support. The glaring issue in child support enforcement today is a non-resident father's ability to provide full or consistent child support payments. <laughs> the literature reflects this divide as fathers have been categorized as deadbeat dads, then dead broke dads, and now disconnected dads who do not commit to the mother and child. Child support in the United States should strengthen marriage as the norm, restore broken homes, and encourage unmarried couples to commit to marriage. They also believe that home-based child care should be prioritized over universal daycare. So, in other words, they think that the mother should stay home with the children and there should be a married father out working. I mean, we are literally going directly back to the 50s nuclear family. Concurrently, children who spend significant time in daycare experience higher rates of anxiety, depression, and neglect, as well as poor educational and developmental outcomes. Instead of providing universal daycare, funding should go to parents either to offset the cost of staying home with a child or to 
to pay for familiar, familial in-home daycare. So if you are married happily with children, this would be a really great situation for you where one of you could stay home with your kids and you could get paid to do so. Most likely that the mother is going to be the one staying home with the children because in a country where there is an inequity in pay between men and women, it is highly likely that the father is the higher income earner and so mom will be staying home. And you cannot tell me with how well articulated this document is that they are not aware of that. They definitely are trying to get moms, women to stay home with the children while dad goes out to work just like we did in the fucking 50s. Now it's worth noting that at no point do they discuss any plans for single mothers like me who may not have a family member who can stay home with the kids. What are we supposed to do? If you were thinking to yourself this whole time, they can't force any of us to do this, that would be a violation of our rights as American citizens. Then you would be wrong. Because promise number one is they plan to restore the family as the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. It says here, it's time for policymakers to elevate family authority formation and cohesion as a top priority and even use government power, including through the tax code, to restore the American family. Now, they've already talked about using child support as a means of restoring the American family. They've already talked about uh, the American family being a marriage being a marriage between a man and a woman, being a marriage between a man and a woman that includes children that are biologically related to that man and that woman. Where does that leave same-sex couples? Where does that leave single mothers? And where does that leave childless women? And if that wasn't enough for you, they double down here by saying, but the pro-family promises expressed in this book and central to the next conservative president's agenda must go much further than the traditional narrow definition of family issues. Every threat to family stability must be confronted. This resolve should color each of our policies. They're being pretty clear about this. They consider any family unit that is not the traditional nuclear family to be a threat to family stability, a threat. Their use of this word is intentional because if you consider something a threat, then you're justified in using hostile force against it in order to suppress the threat. So can guarantee that if this country elects a Republican president, they will use law enforcement and the court system to force us into compliance with their idea of what a family should look like. And if we refuse to comply, they will take our children from us. They will say that we are unfit to parent. They will say we're abusive and neglectful. They will say that we are failing to provide for them and they will remove our children from our homes, put them into the foster care system, and then place them with other families, traumatizing them. And if you think that they're not capable of doing that, look at what they've been threatening parents of transgender children with simply for affirming their child's identity. They've called them abusers, they've said that they're groomers, they've said that they're unfit to parent, and they have threatened to remove their kids. People are fleeing Florida with their families in order to avoid this persecution. And if you're a woman who has decided not to have children, as is your right, you can expect to experience a heavy tax burden for not having kids. This is how they will force you into having children. So whatever money you think you're saving by not having kids, you're going to see on your tax bill. That's what's going to happen. The re hmm. Things that make you go, hmm, hmm. This is their agenda. It's trying to force women into getting married. Of course, it's a lot of these uh, Caucasian men and people, whatever, white supremacists. They see that majority, uh, a lot of the uh, minorities are having children and we're starting to outnumber them. And that's why they banned uh, legal abortions, which people are still finding a way around that. They go to Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood knows where to forward you or send you where abortions are still legal. So they still lose out on that. We also have the morning after pill. After you slept with somebody and you mistakenly and you didn't use a contraceptive, just pop a pill, sweetheart. For real, for real. Not that I'm trying to support any of that, but nobody should be forced into having children and being forced into marriage. They want to try to force you in these, into these marriages where you're going to be dominated, controlled, and abused. What are the penalties for when a man is executing domestic violence on his wife and his children? Because we know that's, that, that's a, a large percentage of that. 
What are the penalties for that? You want to sit up here and promote this family type thing and marriages and get the family unit all together? Hell no. Because you can still have a family. It's called co-parenting. I agree that children need both their mother and their father. Yes, they do. But they don't need a mother and a father in the same household. Arguing, fussing, fighting. The kids are all nervous. Children watching how their father goes out there, lay it with other women, make babies all over the place, abuse the hell out of mom financially, mentally, and emotionally. And the children are sitting there watching this traumatized PTSD out. No. You can be together and live separately. And yes, the children do still have both parents. I agree with them on that. Yes, yes. Republican, yes, you're right on that. But you can still have both your parents. He's on one week. The children are at his house this week. Mom gets a break. Look at that whole week where she's composed. She has her own space. Everything is peaceful, calm. And then it's her turn next week to have the children. Dad got a break. He's got his space, his composure. We have FaceTime, we have Zoom, we have video chat. I love WhatsApp for that very reason. You get to see your children and spend quality time because you have some parents who, yes, they may be in the same house with the kid. They give the kid a pat on the head. Don't hardly talk to the kid. Don't even really talk to them. But when you're doing FaceTime, you have no choice but to give them your undivided attention. Every night at a certain hour, Mom is there FaceTiming her kid. He got it set up there on his little thing. Mom is reading the story. They're talking about everything that happened through their day. We don't have to live in the same house, sweetheart, to have a very happy family. We don't. And in fact, if you really want your family to be happy, stop doing the things that we've always done. Isn't that the definition of insanity? Yeah. Look at the divorce rate and the separation rate. Put that together and that's like what? I don't know, 90, over 90%? So that living together, that are all on top of each other all the time, in the same house all the time, freaking me out, man. <laughs> Let me see that. Sorry. That was spinach I had for lunch. <laughs> Forgive me for that. But my thing is no. They have this new thing. It's, they got the abbreviations for it. It's called Still together, but living apart. That's a new thing that people are trying now because this living together crap is suffocating me. It's not working. The kids are a nervous wreck. They're constantly watching the parent. Now, I go over to dad's house. It's peaceful. I go over to mom's house. It's peaceful. Mom is chilled now. Mom got her. She, she treats me like, oh my God, when I'm with my mom for those seven days because she had seven days off. My mom is amazing. She cooks me my favorite meals. Because she knows she's not going to have me for the next seven days. Mom got a break. And they're not talking about anything. What happens when these men lay hands on these women? Will they be cutting off their hands? Huh, Republicans? What's the consequences? What's the penalty of adultery? Do we castrate them? Yeah, you want to sit up there and tell women what they can do with their body. Go ahead and cheat, commit adultery. I dare you. There should be some penalties, but you notice how they don't have any penalties when it comes to how to handle these dudes. The male patriarchy, once again, but we got women in government now. Women, you need to stand up and start speaking out. Don't come at us with this, oh, let's get the American family together again. I agree, let's get it together again. Living apart. Well, we can raise some nice, calm children whose nerves are not broken. And I like the idea of they want more women to stay at home and raise their children. Guess what? Am I for that? Yes. You know why? Because they're saying with pay. Oh, yeah. You know, you have the government. I'm getting texts over here. I, I told you I work as an advice coach. So I, uh, I get emails. And yeah, as long as they put the money in my cash app first, I'll be there in a bit. You know, um... Pay the mom. Because you have governments where, you know, the mother could drop off their kids and the government pays for the, the babysitter or what have you. Why not pay the mother? Because women need to have their own money. 
as a safety precaution. So when runaway husbands want to pick up and run away, she still has her income. I would have been happy to stay at home, even though I like business. I prefer to be out there in the business world. But yo, you know how many mothers would have no problem staying home with their kids? Not a problem. I don't have to go out. I get up in the morning. I have a routine. Five o'clock in the morning. I'm up. Snap it up. We got it all together. And I'm getting paid? Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay, like I said, oh, and then the thing is, the point that she also brought out, raising taxes on people just because you choose not to have children. That's one of the things that they're going to try to implement to force this on women. They're trying to force you to be married, force you to be in these relationships. Force you to have these, ooh, child, child. Sheila's losing it again, child. And because you choose not to have children, your taxes are going to go through the roof. Okay, so uh, come election day, you know how to vote. Republican, I'm a theocrat personally, because I already know what's up. You ain't fooling me. I'm a theocrat. I already know what's, what works. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But I just wanted to share this, you know, the project that they'll be working on in 2024 and 2025, how they want women <coughs> to be stuck in these ma marriages and having children. Ooh. Meanwhile, and then they're talking about, let's take it back to the 50s, the 40s and the 50s. Let's take it back to how a lot of these men sat up here and talked about a lot of the women, black women especially, they focus on whatever. Who cares anymore? Um, you sat up there and you got rid of the husbands and the fathers for welfare. But child, please. Half of the, look at the divorce court. Half of the men don't have jobs. Half of them don't have enough a, a job to pay much of nothing. So you talk about, let's go back to <laughs> the women sitting at home, raising the little kids, the little toddlers, the whatever child, the pain in the rear ends who grow up to like have no appreciation, but that's not here there. My own personal issues. <laughs> but um, yeah, <laughs> stay focused, Sheila, stay focused. <laughs> um, you want to try to say, let us depend on the man's check, our whole survival. Again, here we go back into the 40s and the 50s. We have to depend on dad's money. Meanwhile, dad has a gambling problem. Or dad, he, he's out there spending the money on smoking dope, smoking weed, smoking uh, crack. Where's the paycheck? So when the man comes home and, 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 and wifey and the... <laughs> this is pitiful. Wifey and the... <laughs> I gotta laugh, you know. It's just too, too stupid. So... <laughs> Oh, will the rent be getting paid? <laughs> Depending on some man for your survival, child. Get real. Will the rent be getting paid this month, honey? <laughs> the children need new shoes. <laughs> need new shoes. You know, my clothes is kind of like worn. I, I got to sit up here and come to some dude for money? And, and he drank it all up this month. He, he gambled it up. He smoked it up. He spent it at the strip club or he spent it on his side piece. And then when you want to say something about it, like, <laughs> he's ready to bust you in your lips. <laughs> this is just too wild. Trying to take women back to the 40s and the 50s show. It's scary. <laughs> not for me because I'm not married. Don't want to get married. I'll pay the higher taxes. I don't give a damn. <laughs> You're not going to put that ball and chain on me. But, um, to, yeah, uh, we don't know whether the rent is going to be paid this month. <laughs> we don't know whether the rent is going to be paid this month, children. Will you get your shoes that you was looking for, Johnny? <laughs> your guess is as good as mine, honey. <laughs> Mommy's not allowed to work and get money, you know, that can pull us all out of this nonsense. But no, we got to worry about daddy's ego. <laughs> this is crazy, child. 
when mama could just say, you know what? I'm done with this bullery. <laughs> I tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> Kids, I got you this week, honey. Grab your coats, grab your stuff. I'm out. We're out of here. Yeah, we are. And dad, uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. You'll be on next week. <laughs> Personally, me, I can't be so bothered. But anyway, enough of the comedy. I always see, I have to see the humor in everything, sweetheart. You have to because when you lose your sense of humor, then you've really lost and it's time to commit Harry Carey. <laughs> so don't you ever lose your sense of humor. I love you.